we were cohesive and unified in our ideas about people being independent, people overcoming barriers and being able to stand on their own two feet and strengthen themselves. Parkland College works extensively with our rural communities. That's part of our mandate to work in the rural communities and we work lots in the First Nation communities. So throughout that process I met with um, uh, Grace Keepness from Pasqua First Nation and um, what came up was that she you know very kindly and very tactfully said that uh, we've been running essential skills programs for a lot of years now we do a good job at it and um, they're helpful but there's a piece missing and the piece was the connection for youth to their own culture. It was also meant to uh, help people be independent and not codependent on communities or other community partners so that they could have a voice for themselves and be able to advocate on their own behalf or with some support along the way as they grew. And to understanding um, their history that was very important. So she really felt that we needed to look at having a life skills or a personal development component within the essential skills programming. That uh, simply doing employability skills and essential skills was not enough to meet the needs of the students. I would say everybody that worked together to have this program, I think, was the highlight with Parkland and the, the different communities, their, their committee members, the elders that attended. I think everybody put something to the program, and I think that was the highlight. I suggested that we could call it Buffalo Pathways because I used to hear elders stating that education is our buffalo. Education is our buffalo. Um, our buffalo are our people. And if they have the right resources, and if they have the right um, tools and the supports, the networks that can help them, they can create their own pathway. For me, that is, um, I guess, a give back because I was a, a student of Parkland myself, and without those tools, I wouldn't be where I am today. We took each individual through an interview and each of the clients that we met with we were looking for people who were who were verbally telling us they were ready for the program and so we asked a variety of questions like tell us a little bit about yourself and and we were we would ask uh, more open-ended questions which would show us whether or not they were able to speak on their own behalf and some students were forthright and were able to to share with the interview panel if they were ready or not like just based on their responses so I think the questions were very detailed and specific and then uh, the interview panel had to make a decision on what came out of the interview, how, how the client participated in the interview process. We started a few years back putting it into the schools, having a feast. We're not forcing anybody to come. Are the parent to send their students for, but we do get a good turnout, and uh, we try to uh, teach them what uh, what we know and the meaning of uh, of a feast for uh, the start of uh, start of the school year all the way through. So these type of teachings that. Uh, we did some of the, the group. They haven't uh, really got to know some of the ways that uh, 
We don't see Songo. One band couldn't accommodate all the participants of the program. We reached out to other bands that might be interested. So we bought in the Pipe Ots, Stan and Buffalo, Muscapete, and, and uh, if they wanted to be a part of it, we bought in Dean and we bought in Marilyn, and we kind of formed a committee. It was interesting to know what they were studying, and uh, we gave them words of encouragement, like to do more in life for themselves. Like, we didn't have this back in our day. Like, so most of uh, students, uh, most of the people my age didn't, didn't get an education because uh, we didn't have a high school. All we had was a day school on the Pipe Art Reserve. And, but our parents like pushed us to do more in life, but there was really not much there because we never, there was no funding or, but now it's just, I always told them it's set right in front of you. All you have to do is get up, come here, you know, and uh, do something with your life. I respect the old people of elders, because one day you're gonna be there, we say. What would you like? You like to be respected. Take them into the feast and where they sit, all the uh, things they use, the rattle, the pipe, and that. We try to teach our young ones not to play there, respect that area. So these are very uh, sacred items they tell them and try and pass that on. But uh, in the way of a feast too comes a lot of teachings. I thought it was perfect just for the beginning of my whole schooling and yeah, I don't know. And when you first came to the reserve, there was a lot of people that wanted to, to come, but only four from each community were to be selected, so I really didn't think I was gonna get in, and I really, really wanted to. And when we came for the interview, I kind of just opened up, like I did through the whole course, like a bunch of us opened up a lot, and it was like, yeah, it was good. And then during my interview, I didn't expect to open up as much as I did. We asked them if they felt like they were ready to take on a program or take, take on a new challenge, and a lot of them were you know, could would say, oh, I'm not sure, or, you know, yes, I'm ready to do this. And so any of the ones who were really dynamic in their responses, we felt that that was a good fit, but also being open and honest with us was also a good indicator. People who were, who were very well-spoken, I guess, in a sense, but also truthful about their journey. So if they were alcohol and drug-free, we were looking at that because we didn't want people who were potentially using or still maybe not on, on the pathway to healing themselves. Yeah, I just spoke a lot about past traumas and that kind of stuff, and, like, and that intrigued me even more about the program just, just from the interview. The way I opened up and the things we talked about and then yeah starting the course like even on the first day we did a lot of talking about ourselves our pasts and that kind of stuff and that was something I really needed at that time and I do believe it helped me. Workers from each of the First Nation communities helped us to understand what their needs were. The members helped us to understand what their needs were. Um, and most importantly, we learned to be um, at, I guess at peace and quiet from the elders, right? We learned that we needed to um, uh, how can I say this, reflect, you know, not make decisions hastily, but reflect on what's going on, reflect on the process, reflect on what makes sense for each of the communities and for the members within those communities and for our youth. So the process was so valuable to work together collaboratively and to come up with uh, a curriculum that you know wasn't perfect, but we learned what is needed, what isn't needed.